This American woman chose to raise her kids overseas and not in America, and it's going viral. You know, even in Taiwan, there is threat of war over geopolitical beef. But in America, there is just war in the public streets. We got to talk about this article that went viral on CNN. It is titled, Opinion. Right now, I'd rather raise my child in Taiwan than in America and I'm not the only one. Yeah, it is written by Clarissa Way, and we know Clarissa because she interviewed us for LA Weekly years ago. Shout out to her, but she has been in Asia, and she is raising her son out in Taiwan. And now, I will say this. Initially, you say, okay, a Taiwanese-American woman going back to Taiwan, what's the big deal? This doesn't shock me. But if you think about how right now Taiwan is kind of in a pickle, in a geopolitical pickle, where, uh, you know, there's possible war over Taiwan, you know, and it could happen on Taiwanese soil, potentially. Uh, then it kind of goes into wondering, wait, why would she go back to Taiwan? Right. And I think that that's why, why the article's going viral. However, Andrew, it is true. We know a, quite a few Taiwanese Americans that moved back to Taiwan in the past five years, right? Yeah, that's true, especially during the pandemic. So Taiwan was a popular place for a lot of them. Now, obviously, there's a ton of factors you want to think about when moving your family overseas. But David... Clarissa is a great writer. Let's go into what she talked about. Anyway, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smile Sauce at smilelessauce.com. She says, my friends in the States are convinced I'm living in a highly volatile and dangerous place, but Taiwanese people harbor similar beliefs about the States. Wow. So just as you think Taiwan might be going to war... That's not as concerning as whatever is even happening in the United States. Potentially war in the streets, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm just going to pop up this horrible thing that happened at the Tequila Costco near our hometown just a few months ago. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, our hometown is not necessarily known for this type of thing, so it was really sad. And, you know, I mean, but obviously people have been talking about potential some sort of civil war or civil cold war in America, which I do think is happening. But she also goes on to state and say, listen— my parents came to America because they wanted, because uh, they considered America a safe haven and wanted me to grow up with all its comforts. And a decade later, I did the exact opposite of what my parents did. And I moved to Taiwan with my husband later just to give birth to my baby boy in Taipei. She also says, in Taipei, I can walk down dark alleyways long past midnight with my purse wide open without fear of getting robbed. Adding, it's something that she would not feel comfortable doing in America. Let's take a look at the Global Peace Index, Andrew. Taiwan is the 33rd most peaceful state territory in the world. The United States is 131. Here are the top 10. Iceland, Denmark, Ireland, New Zealand, Austria, Singapore, Portugal, Slovenia, number 9, Japan, number 10, Switzerland, number 11, Canada. Wow. Now, let me tell you this, Andrew. For me, maybe because I'm not Taiwanese myself... I'm looking at Singapore or potentially Canada as places that I could see being pretty nice places to raise a family. Right. But I want to break down what Clarissa said right here. She says, it's not so much that the United States has become more dangerous, although according to the statistics, that is true. It's more that I've gotten used to letting my guard down. Now, I thought this was interesting because, of course, of course, everybody knows that Taiwan is safer than pretty much any American city, right? We get it. The streets of Taipei, which is the city, is safer than any city in America, like any comparable city it's in America. It's probably not right? even close by several yeah. standard deviations. But I think what's key is that she is used to letting her guard down when she walks around at night, which in America, in an American city in New York, you can be safe. I think it's safe. But you can't let your guard down. That's definitely not. Like, you definitely cannot let your guard down when you're walking around New York City. Um, but you can let your guard down in Taipei. And letting your guard down, to me, just kind of signifies, like, I don't want to think about it. You're and saying I think turning in, off the, the radar of life. Yes. Beep, 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 your beep, alertness, beep. you know. And I think in maybe certain smaller cities in Canada, you can let your guard down a little bit more. Oh, yeah, makes don't sense. you know. Let like, your guard down because we just got fishermen. <laughs> I mean, I feel safer walking the streets of Toronto late at night than in New York. Like, I definitely can let my guard <laughs> down a little close. bit, bro. I, I, I walk around with my phone out. I mean, I, that's still maybe not that smart, but I wouldn't do that in New York when I'm at night. But anyways. Um, I think 
here's just a few quick thoughts before I get into five points to remember. I think a lot depends on individual networks, family, and let's be honest, Andrew, personal wealth. Right. Now, I think for her situation, maybe it's family. I mean, maybe if her husband is from Taiwan, she has family, like her all her cousins are in Taipei. You know, obviously that makes your life a lot better. Obviously, if you have opportunities for work over there, that's going to matter because if you can't find work, are you really going to move somewhere? Well, unless you, if you have an cre- incredible amount of money, you can move anywhere and just right. live off whatever Listen, if you got a lot of income. money, anywhere is nice. <laughs> um, here's five points to remember, Andrew. Point number one, living overseas is great, but only if you're on American wages. Maybe if you can work remote, you know, you got a VPN, you got investments, property, things like that that can generate U.S. dollars that can get you more bang for your buck overseas. Yeah, now not everybody has family overseas that they're close with that they can benefit off from or that they can stay with or even ask for help. Okay, so that's not everybody's situation. Interestingly enough, Andrew, I know somebody that I went to high school with that recently retired in their 30s in Colombia with a small child. Now, a lot of people say, oh, Colombia is really dangerous, but I'm saying that they're still making it work because they're probably, they, they probably just understand what they're doing. Right. They've done the due to... Like, I, I guess they've de- checked all the boxes. Right. It depends on your networks and your systems that you have set up. Point number two, raising kids overseas might be great when they're young, but you probably want to move them when they're 12 to 15 years old. That way they can have access to the U.S. job market, which has a much higher ceiling because they'll be viewed, even if they want to work globally in their adult life, they'll be viewed as a U.S. management product. Yes, I have. We have a really good friend who went to USC and he got naturalized as an American citizen, but then immediately moved back to China for work, to work in media as a director, then moved back to LA with a kid, but then now is raising the kid in China, in Beijing. But but he kind of expressed that he would like to raise his kid in high school in America. Right, because but, that's but gonna give a, you that American vibe. Right, but as a child, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, other people uh, that were raised in Taipei were criticizing it, saying, yeah, if you want your child to grow up insecure without creative abilities, assertiveness, and the motivation to stay fit and healthy, raise your kids in Asia completely all the way through 18. Hey, 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 Taiwan is a pleasant place to be, by the way. I will say this. It's pleasant. People are nice. It's really safe. And yeah. And also it really depends ultimately on like which group of high school kids your kids fit in with in America. If they fit in with like the bad kids, the good kids, the middle mixed hybrid kids. Point number three, the grass is always greener on the other side. A lot of people on Reddit were also criticizing Clarissa Way for saying you're just a tourist. You have dual citizenship. You don't have to worry about anything that a local Taiwanese person has to worry about because expats are in their own pool even if they're living in Taiwan. Right, so now here's the question. Now, uh, the author Clarissa might be in this situation where let's say war pops off in Taiwan, she could probably come back to America relatively easy. She's hedged. Yeah, she still has family here, which as an American, maybe that's your advantage. And maybe David, as Americans, as Asian Americans, should you use that advantage to your benefit? Right, you're saying that you have this duality where you can sort of get the best of both worlds, whereas other people are stuck, hyper uh, stuck with the concrete frozen pros and cons of whatever uh, environment they're born into. Yeah, I'm saying that exactly. Like you're Asian American in America and you have to deal with being Asian in America or your identity crisis if you had one or whatever, whatever. And then one of your benefits is that maybe you have family or you have an opportunity because you're that Asian, that to go back to Asia and come back when you want. We have a cousin, first cousin, who's mostly grew up in America, moved back to Shanghai later in life, had a couple kids in Shanghai while working as an expat, and now moved back to LA because they want to raise their kids as Americans, right? So there's so many different types of combinations, right? But yes, of course, as an expat, you are essentially a visitor until you're not. Right, right, right. Um, And everybody's situation is going to be different. Like everybody's individual exposure to a long list of pros and cons is even going to be variable just based off like literally. David, you've mentioned this and let's just play this out for the, to wrap up this video. You've mentioned Canada or Singapore as places that you would in theory like to raise a family. I would because they seem like they get the upside of the Western world, which is America. I mean, you know, 
America being the mass of the English Western speaking. world, but it minimize mitigates some of the downsides okay, of America, so, so, which is like the gun violence or bad influences or whatever. So let's play this. How do you get to Canada? How do you move to Canada or Singapore? I would Singapore have to seems- literally just marry a Canadian girl or a Singaporean girl, right? That's the only way to realistically do it unless you're on some sort of crazy, because obviously I don't work like an expat job. Right. Not a global private equity consultant or something like that. Right. So you're, you'd have to marry a citizen of that country. Right. Right. Which is exactly what everyone's done for decades, right? Right. But they've done that to get to the West, to America. Right. But now you're thinking, so, so let's say you have to, I obviously, it seems more likely that you would marry a Canadian citizen just because it's closer to Canada. It's a Western country. It's right there. We know more Canadians. What are you saying, la? You this is on Singapore? No, I'm just saying we don't know as many Singaporeans. I don't know. I mean, the situation. What you'd have to marry a Singaporean that wants to move back to Singapore, not a Singaporean that wants to stay here. You could do six months in, six months out. Who knows? See, yeah. see now, now you're just complicating your life. Who? Right. So, so what I mean to say is this. What I mean to say is this. Cool, Clarissa can do it. She figured out a way to do it. Yes, she probably has an advantage. She can come back to America. But all these people who said they wanted to move to Canada when like Trump got elected and for all these political reasons, it's not that easy to just move to Canada. It's also not that easy to just move to Singapore unless you have a good job opportunity. Right. Period. Point number four, Andrew, some people were criticizing her because in her article, she sort of frames it like it's a divisive politics and crime issue. But other people were saying, well, I really think it's just a housing and child care cost thing here in the States. It's not really the crime and divisiveness. But it's like, well, these are all just issues and it just depends on your own exposure to them. I mean, listen, if you don't want to have to think about your child's safety at the park, I mean, yeah, there's some cities in America that are pretty safe. I'm sure there are in the suburbs somewhere, but definitely not in any city like Taipei. Dude, Asia is the only place that got the big, crazy metropolitan cities that are super safe. Tokyo is really safe for how big it is. Tokyo is very safe for how busy it is, right? Um, Even cities in China are pretty safe. Hong Kong is actually fairly safe for how big it is. Like Taipei is not even the biggest city, but it's very safe. Right. Um, ultimately, I think everybody's got to take a look at their own situation. Uh, you know, not everybody's going to have the same capacities and capabilities, but if you really think about raising your kids overseas, you should take a look at it. Yeah. And, and my only, like, I, I would support anybody who wants to raise their kid overseas. I think there's tons of good reasons now, uh, but you got to ask yourself, if that's a dream of yours, how are you going to do it? Now, obviously, no, when a lot of people wanted to come to the West or like a lot of women, you know, men or women, but mostly women, they would just marry in to a citizen of the West. And then you go to the West. That's your ticket. Boom. Easy. Not, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's simple. Is Singapore the new West? David is looking for some Singaporean girl who in America who wants to marry him. Yeah, I need a young Michelle. So young. David is looking for a nice... Singaporean girl. Okay. Anyway, right. guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Uh, if you guys have kids, have you thought about raising them overseas? If you don't have kids, would you raise them overseas? And what do you think about this whole new phenomenon? Because it just feels like, I mean, I guess there's American culture everywhere in the world now. You're not going to be missing out on any change. You could go to Costco anywhere. Yeah, you can watch Netflix in every country. So, uh, anyways, guys, let us know in the comments down below. Hit that like button. Uh, Give us a super thanks if you enjoyed this video. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.